Hello friends, Kishan is here and welcome you in this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, we are going to look how to manage transaction declaratively in a Spring with JDBC module using annotation. And after this video session, I'm going to upload uh, another video which will contain the concept regarding how to manage uh, annotation, uh, how to manage transaction declaratively using annotation as well. So in this video session, we'll focus how to manage transaction using uh, declaratively uh, using annotations. So as I have created this project in my previous video tutorial, uh, there I have shown you how to manage transaction programmatically, right? So I'm making another copy of this project in my same workspace and I would give the name a spring programmatic transaction management using annotation and let's close the previous project let's open this project so <coughs> sorry I hope you would have covered my previous video tutorial so in this video tutorial basically in that video tutorial, I taught you how to manage transaction programmatically. But in this video, we are going to learn how to manage transaction without writing this boilerplate code. So this code I am going to comment it. And here, let's add unimplemented method here. Now, these two code, these two calls, I am going to wrap inside this method. Now this my method is throwing some exception check decision so let's throw here then this exception as this is a checked exception which we had defined in earlier tutorial so we will have to declare this exception is corresponding interface as well right because this is a check exception and once you specify exception here then caller that is nothing but your client program is also throwing exception so handle within the try catch okay now as i'm planning to handle transaction declaratively right using annotation so we don't require this transaction template anymore so i'm going to remove this transaction template code and press ctrl shift o for organize import now as i have, as I have deleted transaction template from service class so this entry I will have to remove from your configuration file as well, right? So while configuring the service class, we had, I mean, injected transaction template. So this entry we have to remove as well. And we don't require this transaction template now. So remove this one as well. Now, uh, as we are going to manage transaction using annotation, right? Still we require a transaction manager. So, how we can manage transaction using declarative using annotation? So, we require a you have uh, make sure your XML doc type contains namespace tx, tx nothing but a transaction management. Now, tx colon, when you do tx colon, then you get three choices, right? tx advice, tx annotation derivative, and tx JTA transaction manager. So, JTA transaction manager is basically to manage transaction. To manage transactions, uh, if you want to manage the transaction, if you want to manage the distributed transaction management, then this comes into the picture. But here we are managing the transaction locally, local transaction management, and using annotations, not XML. So I go for the second option, right? And here you have one option is called transaction manager, right? Transaction manager equal to transaction manager, and this is the ID of the transaction manager. Here transaction manager either I can remove or I can keep transaction manager I have both options if you specify your uh, transaction manager ID as transaction manager then you have choice to leave as well right but if you give the ID of your transaction manager something else like TX then in that case always you will have to specify transaction manager attribute I hope you guys understood these things 
so even though I have choice to leave these things still I am keeping these things only ok so this was the things we need to modify in our XML file now go to your service layer class and here I want to manage transaction within this API within this method so before this method I am going to annotate this method with at the rate transactional something is called at the rate transactional annotation which happens to import from the spring framework itself now while annotating this method you can specify many attribute like you can specify isolation level isolation level like read committed don't worry about this isolation level and all uh, anyway I'm going to cover these things programmatically in next series of video tutorial so and uh, theoretical concept about these constants uh, this isolation and propagation everything I have already posted in my uh, uh, earlier video tutorial so please go and refer my previous video tutorial then we can specify also propagation level right there are seven propagation level in a spring so here I would go for the required now you can specify read only as well read only I would give false so that my transaction would be able to write data into my data store now uh, you can specify time out as well right time out in, is in milliseconds I think so you can check API that is in milliseconds or seconds I hope that would be in milliseconds and last attribute we can specify rollback for right you can specify the exception class as well in what kind of exception uh, on what kind of exception you want to roll back your exception so I would specify exception dot class and even you can specify some custom exception class as well so these are the attributes I have specified over here now to manage transaction declaratively we require some more jars to be added in my class path so when you manage transaction declaratively either using annotation or using XML configuration then a spring has dependency on uh, on a, a spring UOP module so in my user defined library I am going to add little more jars so be with me so add library user library user libraries and here is my user library you can see only this much jar I have added so first five jars I have added which are related to the core spring itself now third uh, next jar I had added for the spring with JDBC and spring.tx for transaction management if you manage transaction programmatically then only you can suffice with this jar and common loggers spring has a external dependency on common loggers so I have added common loggers and this is for MySQL so now let's add jars related to the spring AOP which is in spring distribution file so go to here so I will require a spring AOP and a spring AOP release and a spring expect release so add these two jars as well again I had already explained in a spring AOP module so a spring provides you just a interface and abstract classes in these two API so implementer of EOP and expect is provided by the third party so we required to add a third party EOP related jars in our class path as well so let's go and add those jars as, those jars as well so spring EOP jars I have already downloaded and kept in my machine so these four jars I am going to add in my class path first jar is EOP alliance second you have a expect J third jar you have a expect JRT and fourth expect J Weaver jar so these four jars also we need to add in our class path so that's all and click on the ok so if you come here so all required jars I have added in my class path now come back here one more thing uh, one more modification is still pending what do you think if I run this application this project is gonna run let's run and see you'll get an exception for sure so look at here so we got some exception why intentionally I have thrown this exception because I wanted to show you explicitly it so you can say business bank service is expected to be type of com.info.service.impl 
bank service sample but was actually type look at this hero if you search on the stack test then many people find uh, get this exception while the development reason for this is your service class if you look into the service implementation class from where you make a call to the doll layer and there you want to manage the transaction then your service implement service implementation class implements a interface in that case you need to specify a more attribute over here is called proxy target class and by default value for this attribute is false so make it true now everything is in place and let's go and run so before that is i would like to see my database uh content so currently kishan's account contains 75000 and raj account contains 34000 so if i run it So saying that amount is successfully transferred from one account to another account. If go I, I try to refresh them, this first account will become 74 and second 35. So yeah, it's working perfectly fine. This is for positive scenario. Now uh, let me sh let me simulate some error. So suppose to check whether this code is handling transaction management or not. So go to the doll layer. So here, while depositing, while withdrawing the money, everything su gets successfully is executed. And while depositing intentionally, I am making this column name as account and underscore balance one. And see what happens if I run the application. So look at here. So saying that my console is saying that. Rupee is 1000 transferred from uh, first account to second account but while depositing the money we are getting the SQL exception because this column is not available in the database. Now if I refresh this one then uh, you can see this would be the 74 only and this would be the 75 because we are handling the transaction. Let me refresh see A amount is still 74. And this is 75 means our code is capable to handle transaction right so this is the way to handle uh, transaction declaratively using annotation so that's all I wanted to show you in this video tutorial so let's run one more short positive scenario again after making this change so here we go it's working fine so if I refresh 73 and 76 so this way guys we can manage transaction using annotation so that's all i wanted to show you in this video tutorial and uh, next video tutorial i'm going to cover how to manage transaction using uh, xml configuration file so please be with, be there with me and i would recommend you to please subscribe my youtube channel so that uh, you'll uh, get benefited from my uh, latest video and uh, happy coding. See you.